Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this end of the weekend. It is Sunday, July 30th, 2023, about 10.56 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the map and on the globe shows a 2.4 into the Puerto Rico area. Uh, also, it looks like there's a little bit of movement stirring up into the West Coast area here in Southern California. Notice this uh, red circle showing up just outside the San Bernardino Mountain area uh, where we did see a slight uptick here across the area of Southern California. I don't think we've seen anything above 2.5, but let's just go ahead and check this out. Nothing above that level, although just a slight increase here in the microquake department there across Southern California over the last 24 hours. Bay Area did see some movement earlier this morning, a 3.6. Haven't really seen any further activity here across the Bay Area since then. And far as Northern California goes, did see a little activity here across the Petrolia area. 2.3 down there into the Cascadia subduction zone at 25 kilometers deep. Notice that 2.3 down there into that subduction zone area. Uh, let's go ahead and check the uh, trimmer map here real quick tonight to see what we have going on. For trimmer activity, uh, still somewhat elevated, 232 epicenters of trimmer, mostly uh, in Washington and Oregon here across the center portion of the Cascadia. Not a whole lot going on throughout Northern California as far as that movement goes, but we are seeing a little bit of activity further upstream from the trimmer, which occurs obviously downstream further, about 44 or 45 kilometers or so below the surface uh, into the subduction zone this activity occurring upstream closer to the locked area of that Cascadia a little spotty activity throughout Oregon and Washington as well not a whole lot going on through Yellowstone but uh, let's double check that and make sure we have the latest information here in regards to Yellowstone um, that is a bunch of interference, right? Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. That is uh, what looks like some type of error going on up there. I don't know if they have any wind events going on up there across Yellowstone, but let's just let's go ahead and chime in and see what we have across the windy map. Windy, right? Get it? Wind. Uh, we'll check out the wind gust up here. There's not a whole lot going on as far as wind streams, uh, or at least elevated wind events across Yellowstone currently. Uh, so I believe this is some type of interference technically involved in the um, internally, so to speak, uh, amongst the, uh, the network, so to speak, across this area. I'm really not seeing this show up across the areas of the other seismograph stations. If that were true, then we'd be looking at a major earthquake swarm and uh, maybe something about ready to pop out here across Yellowstone. But as you can see, that activity is localized to this um, seismograph station there. Not showing up across Borehole, Holmes Hill, anywhere else uh, across the Yellowstone area. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, chime in elsewhere here across the rest of the states. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, for the rest of the area down here across the uh, Gulf of Fonseca, right? Been watching earthquake swarm here. Did see a 4.2 a little bit further upstream here earlier this morning. Now we are seeing some further activity here on the earthquake 3D globe uh, within that region. Notice uh, quite a few twos and uh, maybe some threes in there as well. The latest earthquake map. Let's go ahead and chime in here on the EMSC model for this specific area. Uh, we do have um, a 2.8 just upstream off the coast of Nicaragua within the last hour. Not a big earthquake, but notice this movement here across the Bay of Fonseca and further upstream. This is just continuing. Uh, that leads me to believe that there's further strain in the area. This is the last 24 hours, 48 hours, and the last week shows the impressive activity here across the region. So... It has not calmed down completely. Things are still kind of stirring up here across that base. So we'll continue to watch that uh, potentially uh, for some further movement. Getting a little bit of activity further down south here into the South America region. As noted there on the Earthquake 3D globe. So let's see what we have. Looks like uh, 
Well, 4.8 coming in there off the coast of Chile. Uh, see if the USGS is reporting that activity. Um, yeah, 4.8 earlier this evening, a couple hours ago or so, 10 kilometers deep. That movement showing up there on the globe and also uh, all the other agencies. The Atlantic Ocean showing a little bit of stirring up here across the divergent boundaries of 4.6 here. Northern Mid-Atlantic Ridge, that's going to be this area right here. That's a, a divergent boundary separation of the oceanic crust out here, creating some new land 10 kilometers deep. So we'll watch for some further movement out here across areas potentially around the Caribbean plate that could stir things uh, up there far as increasing movement goes. It's been a little while since we've seen any uh, activity stirring up out here. So uh, we'll watch and see how things play out. Continued earthquakes warm here across the Azores and uh, the rest of the Mediterranean out here. A little spotty. Some twos and threes out there. No major movement here across the plate boundary. Older movement here across China from uh, earlier this morning and late last night. And for the most part, the cluster clustering of earthquake activity has been confined across the Indonesia area and filling in here across Papua New Guinea. Look at that. Got a 3.3 and a 4.5 filling in in the seismic gap over the last couple hours. Now, uh, USGS not really picking up on too much of it. There's that 4.5 outside of Papua New Guinea, 35 kilometers deep. But as you can see, a little bit of further movement along this plate boundary uh, showing up. It's been awfully quiet here across this region locally. Uh, looks like things are finally starting to fill in. Getting some deeper movement quakes here outside of Tonga. 400 kilometers deep. I am still waiting on some surface earthquake activity here across the region. We've been bouncing back and forth here between deep quakes and shallower earthquake activity here across the plate boundary, but very minimal adjustment up here where it all begins. So we'll watch this area across the Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench here for some surface earthquake activity. Uh, there's that 4.3 outside of Wellington, North Island, into the Cook Strait area early this morning. Shaking things up out there across New Zealand. Let's go ahead and check in with the GeoNet servers here and uh, see what we have locally here across New Zealand. There's that, uh, well, they're, they're reporting it as a 4.6 yesterday, even though USGS is reporting that as a 4.3. Latest activity showed a couple smaller aftershocks here across the area of Wellington and 1.4 and some smaller earthquakes here across North Island. Uh, I don't think we've seen any major adjustment here across the area of New Zealand uh, within the last few hours. There's that four-pointer showing up there almost about 20 hours or so ago. Very significant as far as the seismic signature goes, but uh, aside from that, things have calmed down drastically here over the last 14 or 15 hours or so. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity stirring up there in New Zealand currently. And far as the uh, movement up here across the Kuril Kamachaka, we did have a little deeper activity. Nothing stirring up yet following that deeper movement quake there, the 5.1 into the Kuril Kamachaka. We'll continue to watch that, though. Uh, deeper movement does trigger uh, potentially some surface earthquake activity, so we'll continue to monitor that. Uh, nothing going on, at least according to the uh, EMSC and the USGS out here in the middle of the Pacific. So that leads me to believe here that we're off on the timestamp, but a little bit of movement out here in Hawaii. Um, I'm seeing some from earlier this evening, but these are all small microquakes below the 2.5 threshold uh, around the Kilauea volcano and also a little bit of activity across the Mauna Loa region. So it uh, looks like, um, I think I have this set at 2.5. Uh, 2.3 or so and above as far as earthquake activity. So we don't see that microquake activity in the Big Island chain here. Notice that uh, you know, one would think that the Big Island chain only extends above the surface, but it's been building up here throughout the millions of years. Um, you know, at one point, obviously, it looks like it used to be along the Aleutian Trench. And that will continue throughout the uh, millennia here as it travels in this direction across the Pacific. Pretty crazy to think about, right? A lot of history going on out there across the Hawaiian Islands. 
All right, uh, let's see what we got here. Middle America Trench obviously shown some uptick in movement there across the uh, area. We'll continue to watch that. Um, I don't think we're done yet in that area. The earthquake swarm just kind of came. It really hasn't left yet. So we'll watch that for some further movement. All right, space weather activity. What do we got here? Still looking at some proton events here. Look at that. Goodness, this is like day number three, day number four. Uh, protons affecting the ionosphere at the polar regions. Noticing a little bit of declining here across the northern areas. Uh, but also picking up here on the southern hemisphere uh, on the sunlit side of the earth. Uh, so not for sure what's going on with that. But uh, definitely looks like a major proton event continues uh, within the polar regions. Now that is uh, 99, well, it shows 30% possibility, but that obviously is continuing there with the local information there updated. Far as flaring goes, looks like we had a little bit of sea flare activity kicking up here in the last couple hours. Uh, that is going to show up here right on this map, on this solar flare chart. Notice the sea flare kicking up. Not for sure exactly where that came from. Um, judging by the UV filter ray here, uh, I'm guessing it's probably coming from one of these uh, newer sunspots here on the northeastern quadrant of the sun. Uh, those are the ones that are at least harboring somewhat of growth and development here across the area. Uh, but also this region down here on the southern hemisphere of the sun, fairly complex, a lot of colors. A lot of mixing of those colors and that's what you want to look for in terms of magnetic uh, unstable activity here amongst that sunspot but uh, I think that's the only one possibly and that's possible that that's maybe where that sea flare came from but I'm not hundred percent certain um, these further sunspots are uh, growing but they're not as complex as this one right here so the main area of watching right now is this area uh, on the southern hemisphere of the sun that is currently um, shooting off towards the southwestern quadrant of the sun. We'll continue to watch that. 99% chance of a C flare, 55% chance M flare. X flare remains somewhat elevated, around 5% chance there. And uh, we're not looking at any major solar storms coming up. Potentially G1 around the August 1st, August 2nd time frame. We'll continue to watch that though as we get closer to this time period. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center here uh, looks like fairly mellow conditions here over the next couple days. We'll check this out tomorrow though as this uh, gets updated. All right folks, uh, thanks for chiming in earlier with the uh, moon sample. Uh, we, we kicked off a live stream there of the moon just wanted to see what the uh, the uh, telescopic lens would look like here for a live stream. I wanted to set everything up for the uh, solar eclipse coming up here in, Oct in uh, October of this year. Uh, I'll be out in Nevada amongst the uh, totality line. Uh, now this is not going to be a total eclipse. This will be an annular eclipse. Uh, we're looking at probably 98% coverage there of the sun out around uh, Winnemucca and areas eastward and southeastward. But uh, I will be out there live streaming, obviously, and uh, just kind of setting up my equipment. I want to make sure that things are going to be properly and uh, appropriately um, set up here for the uh, live stream coming up here in a couple months. So, uh, yeah, can't wait. I'm, I'm pretty excited. But uh, appreciate the folks that were chiming in. Let me know how things look. And... Um, well, you know, we might do it here in a, in a week or so again. Just double check it and see how things are uh, going. I do need to do another solar live stream and um, make sure that's set up. Obviously, the moon's pretty easy to uh, videotape and, and live stream. But uh, solar solar activity, obviously, you have to have a little bit more um, the appropriate lens for one and the uh, all the other settings that come with the camera camera excuse me i got hiccups i think that's all the mosquitoes i swallowed earlier while i was out there live streaming but uh it was worth it i appreciate everyone chiming in and um um it, it was definitely worth it that's what it's all about making the uh, viewer 
um, viewership out here and it's a prime you know I, I'm all about quality here on this channel and I want to remain all about quality and facts out here um, so yeah we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime it's uh, what is it tomorrow Monday it's 11 11 right now make sure you make your special kiss out there with your special someone 11 11 we'll see you guys back here tomorrow morning for the update have a good one